Hello, it's Duncan. Team Cuthy Rose is an enthusiastic early adopter of context receivers for simplifying boilerplate code, and not very happy when they were deprecated without replacement. We removed some from the code and left others. With the release of Kotlin 2.2, we apparently have a smooth migration path to their replacement, context parameters. Let's see how that goes. Now it's a context parameter, we actually need to refer to it by name. Back in the autumn of last year, I removed our context receivers. It was quite an intricate refactor, but at the time JetBrain said that there was not going to be a release of Kotlin that supported both context receivers and the new context parameters. So there was really no incentive to hold on for tooling support to do it for us. Having released that episode, I think I must have guessed that it would change their mind, or maybe they had already, because it seems that I reverted the commits for the transaction context receivers. And they've been sitting there for most of a year, giving warnings, but otherwise working. Now Kotlin 2.2 is out, and that does support both context receivers and context parameters. But I think that's only going to be true for 2.2, so now is a good time to get on and convert from receivers to parameters. In 2.2, the context parameters are still experimental, but we like to say kind of on the edge, if not the bleeding edge. And if we go to 2.2, we'll get guard clauses in WENs and the long-awaited dollar, dollar, dollar. So let's crack on. Let's see what version of Kotlin we're currently using. It'll be in libs.version.toml. Oddly, it's grayed out. That's a little bit worrying. Let's see. Highlight the error. Error description. Absolutely nothing. Well, I'll pick up the mouse and hover. Plugin alias Kotlin JVM is not using build scripts. Twice, it seems. Well, I think I'm just going to take it on trust that that's an issue with the build conventions plugin and IntelliJ not recognizing it. Let's go down here and set this to 2.2.0, which is the latest stable version. And to be sure everything is fine, let's kick off a clean build on the command line. So it's dot slash gradle w clean test. And wait. OK, well, we seem to have built and run the test, which is good. Now, context receivers and parameters are set with a compiler flag, and I can't honestly remember where that is. So let's go and ask AI Assistant, where are the compiler flags set in this project? And it says they're here, so let's go and have a look. Ah, there we go, down the bottom, free compiler args add x context receivers. And I note underneath that that I've got the suppress warnings that I evidently added because I was tired of being warned that I was using context receivers and they are deprecated. So first of all, let's take that out. So we do see the warnings. And now we want to convert to context parameters. So I'm going to change that to context parameters and I'll try a build. Aha. OK, so we have an error. And it looks like this version of the compiler will support either context receivers or context parameters, but not both at the same time. So I can't fix them up piecemeal. I've got to find all the errors in this project and fix them all. And unfortunately, it stopped at the first one. So I don't know how big a job that's going to be. Maybe, just maybe, alt enter to quick fix will work. And by golly, it's offered a thing. Replace context receivers with context parameters. OK, so I'm going to hit enter. And it's offered us the name of the parameter, which is C. I mean, I guess that will do for now. Irritatingly, for me at least, the first thing is found is this magic function, which we're only using the code base to get over a bug or a feature that wasn't there yet in context receivers. If I undo this, you'll see that magic was just returning the context receiver. I'm hoping we'll be rid of it by the time we're done. But let's redo there and build again. OK, then here we are in our items interface. And once again, IntelliJ won't tell us the problem unless we move the mouse to hover. I suppose I could have looked down here. But again, I'm going to quick fix and replace context receivers with context parameters. And it's offering us TX for transaction from the name of the type here. In this case, though, in this interface, we don't actually have to give it a name. We can use underscore. Well, that compiles. That's good. Quick fix underscore. So these methods in this interface were saying, in order to save or load, I need a transaction in the context. And previously it would have been the receiver. Now it's going to be a parameter, but as we're not using it, as this is just the interface, we can use underscore. It's a bit ugly, but it will do. Build again. Okay, here we go. Here we are in stock. 
and I believe that this load and update stock list needs a transaction in its context because this items load, let's hover on that. Yes, there you are. That is itself a context function and needs a transaction. So let's quick fix and we'll give that the name TX. And that now seems to be working, but we haven't changed any of this code. And that's because this context function here is passed the context by the compiler automatically. So in fact, I don't think we need to name that. We can make that underscore as well because we don't actually name it in here. The compiler does something. Moving on. All right. In memory items, that's an implementation of our items where the type of the transaction is no transaction. We're not really supporting transactions in memory. So I think again, quick fix, and we're not going to be using it. So underscore may do. F2, and I have Dmitry Kandilov's quick fix plugin installed, which automatically applies the top quick fix. I've got that on Alt F2, I think. Ah, there we go. I can put in the underscore and tab. That one's apparently compiling. Let's go on. Okay, more no TXs. I think I can quick fix and say underscore F2, quick fix, underscore F2, and we're done. Build again. This is DB items. It's another implementation of our items where we actually do need the transaction context. So we had this DB TX context. Let's see what quick fix does. Now I'm going to try calling that underscore. And now you can see that quick fix has put an underscore in here, but that doesn't work. We'll just rename that to be TX for the transaction. And in this case, you can see that inside this function, we were implicitly using the context as a receiver. So we can access this DSL context that was on the context receiver. Now it's a context parameter. We actually need to refer to it by name, but the quick fix has done that for us, which is nice. Any more issues in here? Ah, uh, yes. I think we can probably assume we'll get the same issue. So I will quick fix, call this TX, and the transaction has been added in there. Anywhere else? No, but good. Moving on. Okay, then. In our app class, we have a price stock list loader, and one of its constructor parameters is a context function that needs a transaction in the context, and then takes an instant and returns a stock loading result get back. The complaint here is that callable reference to context is unsupported because it has context parameters. Now I think it's one of those places where context parameters aren't finished yet, but I think maybe if we convert that to a lambda, then actually that compiles. And that's not so bad, so let's press on. Okay, our price stock list loader, quick fix. We'll give that the name TX, and that now compiles. But I noticed that this is a place where we're using this magic function. Why is that? Let's go and have a look at loading. Here it is. Ah, it's that context function there. Well, that should now be supplied by this being a context function. So I think maybe we can just take that out altogether. And if we have, then I think this can be an underscore because we're not actually referring to it. Is that true? Well, we've got an error somewhere else, so maybe it is. This in our list stock test is a place where we're faking items in order to have it return a failure here. So I think I'm just going to do this by hand. I think I'm going to say we don't really care about it. Let's call it underscore and get on with our lives. Okay, then value of contract. This is a place where I was using context receivers to make the test simpler so that we had this fixture resolver class here that made this compile and then this fixture, this type here, is this inside here. Well, let's just see whether the fix is. Let's call it fixture. Well, that's good. This warning here, assert equals between objects of inconvertible types long and price. That looks like a compiler bug to me because this expected price is price and fixture client is returning price question mark. So those are both actually price, but price is a value class wrapping this long. So I think the compiler's just confused there. Okay, so let's just copy that, go to the next one, paste, tab, F2, paste, F2. Oh no, we have fixed them. 
carry on. And this is another similar sort of place. In these cases, we might as well, I think, just say we have a fixture, which is a fixture, and then we'd be using fixture inside here. Although I suppose at least a quick fix will get us closer. So let's say, fix that, make it fixture like that. And now we can get rid of that one. And I think we should be okay. We'll do the same here, call that fixture. Then remove that and put a fixture in here. And if that works, it shows that really context parameters are just another parameter to the function. Maybe we'll just go back here and make that fix with these. So we'll take that, cut into there, get rid of that one. There, not there, there, not there anymore. No, that's all good. And what does our per fixture resolver do? Well, I think we'll leave understanding that to another time. Let's just see whether everything compiles and passes all the tests. And apparently it does, fantastic. Before we go, let's just see whether there's any more uses of our magic that was in here, because I really don't think we should be needing that anymore. It's used there. Okay, so what is this saying? It's saying that if we have a function that requires a transaction in the context, then we can call in transaction, which takes a function that requires a transaction in the context. Well, I'm pretty sure that that is no longer required. Although Gradle seems to think that no tests rely on it at all, which is weird. Let's find these places. Well, it feels like we should just inline that, does it? Items in transaction, item save. Ah, I suppose it made it the receiver so we didn't have to have these items in here. Let's just undo that and leave what we have. But I believe then that makes this unused and does. So let's just delete that file, which for some reason we can't do from there, but we can do from here. And now we're conveniently back where we started. So let's have a look at that commit. We changed Kotlin to version 2.2.0. We then changed the flag from context receivers to context parameters, allowing us to remove this suppress warnings here. And then there were lots of little changes where sometimes we didn't need to reference the context parameter and we call it underscore. And that includes the places where we're calling a function like loading here that itself requires the context. Lambdas aren't properly supported yet, but reasonably sure that will come along. We simplified our tests here because if the context isn't going to make something a receiver, then we might as well just pass it in in this case. And as you can see from here, our magic function, which we had to write because JetBrains didn't finish the context receivers, we can now get rid of because context parameters do largely work. I think I'm going to run one more clean build. And we're done. It'll be interesting to see what AI Assistant thinks we did. Upgrade to Kotlin 2.2, replace context receiver with parameters, remove unused magic, and minor test and code adjustments for consistency. I mean, yeah. And the code analysis says that we have three warnings. Let's check them. This place where something is just confused. Ah, we don't need that anymore if we are not doing fixture receivers. Get rid of that. And that appears to be our compiler bug. So let's amend commit that lot. And we're done for the day. It's a bit of a shame that there isn't a release of the compiler that supports both context receivers and parameters in the same code base at the same time, because it means that a migration like this has to be a big bang. And if you're heavily invested in context receivers, that might just have to stop your project for a while. But we all have to learn lessons about relying on experimental features one way or the other, and at least the quick fix works here. I wonder if the horrible requirement for the underscore is just there so that the compiler knows that it's dealing with parameters rather than receivers. If so, then I suppose that requirement could be removed later, which would be nice. Otherwise, the only real difference between the receivers and parameters is that we have to reference the thing in the context by name when we finally need it. 
but I suppose it's the nature of context that the thing that we mostly populate at the entry point to routine and then make use of in one place several layers inside our engine. So for Team Gilded Rose, it's context receivers are dead, long live context parameters. Now we can get on with our lives free from deprecation warnings. If you'd like to see more lack of warnings, then like this video to encourage me, subscribe to the channel to encourage YouTube, and even if you're not a Java developer anymore, I think you'd enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin and Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.